And what? This is unprecedented. I, I, I just, I can't believe it. Did that just happen, Peter? On September 19th, 22, reigning world chess champion Magnus Carlsen once again stunned the chess world when he resigned his game against Hans Niemann after just two moves, thereby stating to the world, I will not play against this man. Why? Because Carlsen is convinced that Neiman is a prolific cheater, both online and over the board, and most importantly of all, he is convinced that Neiman cheated to beat him in the prestigious Sinkfield Cup, a tournament which Carlsen subsequently withdrew from, and so when offered the chance to start the process of moving on from the drama, Carlsen refused. And not only did he double down on his position through his shocking resignation, he also sought to strengthen it in an interview given soon after, his first since the scandal broke. I'm uh, very impressed by uh, Niemann's uh, play. I think uh, his mentor, Maxim Bluge, must be doing uh, a, great, uh, a great job. So who was Maxim Bluge? And why would Carlsen name drop him, of all people, well, guess what? Maxime Delugi is a former chess coach of Hans Niemann's, but has also been found guilty of cheating on chess.com. Though on this point, it is worth noting that there were some extenuating circumstances around this, as the cheating offences took place when Delugi was teaching a class of students who were shouting out moves. But once again, the insinuation from Carlson was clear. I am your father. Having been dragged into the scandal, Dlugi would go on to formally deny that he helped Hans cheat, and the weight of evidence he gave to support this showed Carlson's statement for what it was, smoke and mirrors. So the gloves were off, and speculation remained rife especially because there was still no formal statement from Carlson accusing Neiman of cheating, and so still no formal investigation being conducted. Neiman's old games were poured over by would-be detectives, looking for any signs of cheating. His past interviews were scrutinised, his possible methods of cheating considered, and then, on September 26, under mounting public pressure, Carlson released the following statement. The six most pertinent words, I believe that Neiman has cheated. There was no more insinuation, no more cryptic tweets. Carlson delivered a body blow and now it was Neiman's turn to go silent. But whilst his Twitter went into hiatus, his lawyers went into overdrive. Because Neiman's silence wasn't a sign of backing down. Far from it. This was the calm before the storm. Neiman was planning a counterpunch of epic proportions. Almost every day, the story developed. On September 30th, it was Fide's turn to get involved, because as the governing board of international chess, they felt obliged to investigate, stating that the focus of the investigation would be twofold, checking the world champion's claims of alleged cheating by Neiman, and Neiman's self-statement regarding online cheating. However, on this latter point, chess.com were already way ahead of them, and to this day, FIDE have still not published the findings of their investigation. October 3rd, Carlson went back to playing over the board chess, scoring a good result in the European Team Championship, and Neiman also prepared to return over the board to play in the US Championship, starting October 6th. But on the eve of the tournament, once again, the biggest cheating scandal in chess history came crashing down on his head. It was the Wall Street Journal who first broke the story on behalf of Chess.com, leading with this shocking headline. Chess.com published their full report shortly after, a whopping 72-page report titled The Hans Niemann Report. At the heart of it, Niemann had lied. Their report found that he had likely cheated in more than 100 online chess games, including several prize money events. So the following statement now turned out to be false. I have never ever in my life cheated in an over the board game, in an online tournament, they were in unrated games. And I'm admitting this and, and, and I'm saying my truth because I do not want any misrepresentation. A very bad look for a man whose reputation was already shot to pieces. 
but the report went even further than the expected remit, which was that chess.com would only analyse Neiman's online cheating on their own platform, but chess.com also analysed Neiman's over the board chess, an interesting move and an indication of their conflict of interest in the whole saga, given the fact that chess.com are currently going through an $82 million merger with the Play Magnus Group, which, you guessed it, started life as Magnus Carlsen's company. Chess.com analysed Neiman's rise to the elite level, his performance in the Sinkfield Cup after Carlsen withdrew, even going so far as to include analysis of Neiman's reaction to beating Magnus Carlsen. The conclusion? Well, whilst they didn't hold back on presenting all of the circumstantial evidence available that supported cheating, in their own words, none of it indicated cheating over the board. The report was dynamite. Again, the chess world exploded into a frenzy of reaction and analysis. Meanwhile, Neiman tried to play chess and dodge journalists, offering little to no comment on the ongoing scandal. His performance in the US Championship was mixed, and as you can imagine, with the eyes of the world upon him, nothing in his play indicated cheating. Neiman showed he could still hang with the best of them despite all the scrutiny and he finished a respectable 7th out of 14. And with the dust somewhat settled on the chess.com report, the US Championships over, it was now Hans Neiman's turn to finally throw his counterpunch. This was his haymaker. On October 20th, Hans Neiman announced via his Twitter that he was suing Magnus Carlsen. But not only Carlsen, also the Play Magnus Group, Chess.com, Danny Wrench, CEO of Chess.com, and Hikaru Nakamura. What was he suing for? Well, a lot. Slander, libel, unlawful group boycott under the Sherman Act, tortious interference with contract and business expectancies, and civil conspiracy. How much did he want? Well, an awful lot. $100 million to be precise, an eye-watering sum which instantly had the intended effect of grabbing headlines everywhere, and such a sum of money really epitomised the lawsuit, big, brash and unapologetic in both its language and its content. It was like Hans Niemann had anthropomorphised into his own lawsuit. So how did two of the key defendants, Carlson and Nakamura, respond when asked for comments by journalists at the recent Fisher Random World Chess Championship? Well, Carlson simply stated, I focus on chess. And from Naka, no comment. All parties have now lawyered up and are prepared to fight back hard. And so the chess world now waits with bated breath to see how the next dramatic chapter of this saga will play out. And here's the bit that lots of people want to know. Straight up, is Neiman guilty, yes or no? So here's my opinion on Hans Neiman's cheating, for what it's worth. Is Neiman guilty of cheating online more times than he has publicly stated? Yes. Is Neiman guilty of cheating over the board? No. He may have done in the past, but I've seen no evidence of that to date, and I see no evidence of cheating in the Sinkfield Cup, played in September 22, or in the US Championship played in October 22, yet he has continued to beat extremely strong players. But what do you think? As ever, please let me know in the comments below, and if you want to see the now infamous game which started all of this between Carlsen and Neiman, then check out the video on the left of your screen, and if you missed part one of this series, then you can check out the video on the right or in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you again on a future video.